Hello and welcome back. We are now going to start on the technician exam on element two. So let's go ahead and jump in there. Let's start with question one. What is a common repeater frequency offset in the two meter band? And your answer is plus or minus 600 kilohertz. Now I just happen to have a radio nearby and I'll do my best to demonstrate that when you transmit to a repeater, it's going to receive at a different frequency than what it transmits from. So you listen on the frequency that the repeater transmits from, but when you transmit, and now I have my dummy load right here, and I'm transmitting on low power, so I'm still going to put my call sign out. Nobody should hear it, but I'm going to turn the light on, and you'll see. Whiskey One, Radio Charlie Papa, testing. And it transmits on 146.190, which is where our repeater listens. And then our repeater retransmits that signal to 146.790. So our repeater has a negative offset. Now, if you were in the 70 centimeter band, it's going to wind up being 5 megahertz, which we will get to that question in just a moment. So the second question for sub element or element 2 sub element A is what is the national calling frequency for FM simplex operations in the 2 meter band? And that is 146.520. You'll want to memorize that frequency because that is the frequency where most people listen on the same frequency. And you don't have to know any repeater offsets or tones or anything like that. What is the common repeater frequency offset in the 70 centimeter band? And that's in the 440 megahertz range. And that is plus or minus 5 megahertz. Again, we're talking about answers that you just have to memorize. These are things that you just plant in your mind and remember. So our question number four is what is an appropriate way to call another station on a repeater if you know the other station's call sign? So again, I'm not going to push the button on my radio this time because it's turned off, but you would say something like, I'm W1RCP. I might say, KO4NLL W1RCP. You say the station's call sign, then identify with your call sign. That is the expected response. You don't really have to call CQ on a repeater. Now on 2 meter simplex and 440 or 70 centimeter simplex, uh, you might be able to call CQ there. Um, that one is left up to how you want to operate. So we are in question number five. How should you respond to a station calling CQ? So let's say, let's just pretend that this is a 10 meter rig and somebody's calling CQ, CQ, this is Alpha Bravo 2 Charlie Delta. So if you heard that, you would say Alpha Bravo 2 Charlie Delta, Whiskey 1, Radio Charlie Papa. And Notice that I use the phonetic alphabet. If you're on HF, phonetic it just goes better. On FM, you're not going to have a problem um, as long as you're full quieting into a repeater, meaning that there's no crackling. Which of the following is required when making on-the-air test transmissions? Again, if I, if I were testing this dunce load, it's really supposed to be a dummy load, but I renamed mine. You would say, this is W1RCP, this is a test transmission, is my radio working? And uh, if it isn't, I guess I won't hear the Roger beep on the repeater. So this is W1RCP, this was a test transmission only. And then I go, oh, it works. So you identify with your call sign if you're the one testing. Already down to question number seven. What is meant by repeater offset? I hope that I did a fairly good explanation of explaining this, but this right here is cut and dry. It is the difference between the repeater's transmit and receive frequencies. That is the answer to what is a repeater offset. 
So we're in alpha 08. What is the meaning of the procedural sign signal CQ? And CQ means that you're calling any station. CQ, CQ, this is Whiskey One, Radio Charlie, Papa. And then somebody might call back and say, Whiskey One, Radio Charlie, Papa, Alpha Bravo Two, Charlie Delta. And then I can call them back and have a conversation or whatever's going on for that particular activity that I'm doing. Which of the following indicates that a station is listening on a repeater and looking for a contact? And the answer is B, the station's call sign followed by the word monitoring. So we're back on the repeater. Again, radio's not on. This is Whiskey One, Radio Charlie Papa, monitoring. Or I might say this is W1RCP, monitoring. And if anybody else is out there, they'll come back. In our town, nobody's coming back. What is a band plan beyond the privileges established by the FCC? It is a voluntary guideline for using different modes or activities within an amateur band. And if we switch over, I can actually show you one of the band plans right here that is published by the AWRL. You can kind of see quickly uh, looking through this where certain activities or modes happen. And there are more. There's some for two meters and 70 centimeters and up. And it's good to look at that if you really want to make a contact. So that is the answer to that question. It is a voluntary guideline, also known as a gentleman's agreement. We're getting down to the last couple of questions here for technician element two, sub element alpha. What term describes an amateur station that is transmitting and receiving on the same frequency? So going back to 14652, if I had another radio with 14652 and gave it to my hand buddy and said, hey, walk a mile, give me a call and let me know what you see. We're on 14652. We're listening and speaking on the same frequency. So it's simplex. There's no duplex or anything going on. I can't hear while I transmit. So that is simplex. What do you do before calling CQ? This is one of the cardinal rules of amateur radio. Listen, listen, and then listen again. Make sure that nobody else is there. Now, when you get down to HF, propagation plays a big part. So if somebody is calling CQ and you can't hear them, doesn't mean they are not there. But these choices, listen first to be sure that no one else is using the frequency. Listen first. Then, after you have listened for some time to verify, you ask, is the frequency in use? And third, it also says make sure you are authorized to use that frequency. That's important because as a technician getting into the hobby, you need to be checking to make sure that you know where you are. If you are on 28 megahertz, and you're at 28.600 and you hear some cool station calling, you better look at your band plan to make sure you belong there. So that's pretty much it for uh, the sub-element alpha for part two. That's element two of the technician exam. I thank you so much for tuning in. I hope these uh, explanations have been helpful. And we will move on down to part two, which should come out in a couple of days, or not part two, but it'll actually be sub-element B in a couple of days. Thanks so much, and 73 from W1RCP.